we are back yes. in the comfort of our living room, mm -hmm. and you're watching The Most Important Things. Cheers to being queer. <laughs> Cheers. So, All right, we'll kick right off. Today's match. What was your expectation going into the match with our men versus England? Well, my expectation is always to win. Love that. That's the expectation. Um, but I was so proud of us today. I loved every minute. I was so nervous. I like couldn't sit still and I could barely watch, but um, I think we did such a great job and I thought we were dominating them. Even though England had more possession today, I was so happy with our confidence and the way that we came out. And it was really impressive to see as like the third youngest team in the, in the World Cup. I was so impressed with our mentality today. I wasn't sure what to expect, um, but I think a tie is great. Now we have, you know, the control in our hands uh, moving into the next game on Tuesday. And, yeah, I'm excited to, to see what they're going to do. What were your thoughts about I, the game? I was nervous. I didn't have as high expectations, I guess, as you did. Um, I'm always hopeful and I'm trying to like manifest that because I want our men to do so well. But we're also young and we're playing against a very equipped, insanely good English side. Um, I am quite surprised and I'm very excited that I'm surprised by how well we did. Mm -hmm. The first 13 minutes, I would say I was freaking out a little bit. Um, I was noticing that we were timid. We were nervous. We weren't any, every time we got an interception pass, we weren't connecting. Mm. So our backs were against the wall a bit more than normal. Um, I could tell they were uncomfortable. They weren't getting a good rhythm, mm -hmm. but I, I, I honestly felt once they settled in and once they started connecting, they felt like they belonged. Mm -hmm. And the second they felt like they belonged, they were incredible. I am so proud of what they did today because that is not easy. To go into a game against a top five team in the yeah. world, against those type of heavy hitters, mm -hmm. I mean, just seeing how we defended as a collective, we were hunting in packs. Mm -hmm. Tyler Adams for me is out of this world. Yeah. I, honestly, the the way he is on both sides of the ball, he's his emergency defending, the way he's getting back, the way he's putting pressure. I mean, he's box to box mm -hmm. and he's so incredible mm -hmm. when he has the ball moving forward in the attack. Mm -hmm. He makes things happen. Mm -hmm. I felt like we dominated the midfield and it was a big part of because of 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 him. And when Aronson came on, I just felt like the subs were good. My biggest question mark, I guess, is the nine. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand Greg's decision on putting right in. Mm -hmm. Only five caps. You know, I know his size is a big factor. I just don't know a lot about him. He was really quiet for me. So I haven't I don't seen know. him play often. Yeah, me either. I, I just don't know often. what's going on with that number nine position. But I do think we had incredible chances to make to make that game 1-0 in the first half. McKinney's mm -hmm. uh, half volley that goes over. Yeah. Imagine imagine if he post. puts that on, yeah. on frame. What I do think is today that really stood out to me is our countermeasures were great in order to then have the second wave, wave of attack because we do get stretched at times, yet having Tyler Adams in there kind of controlling the countermeasures and really telling people, okay, you need to be here, here, here. Um, and really solidifying that in order for us to have the second wave of attack, I think really helped us. Mm -hmm. um, and also there needs to be some, some cleaning up of the build out. I feel like that is when you were talking about how they were a little bit timid on the ball. Like mm -hmm. I feel like our attacking mentality building out from the back is, yeah, I think it can be cleaned up a little bit. Um, once Zimmerman, uh, or Reem were kind of breaking that that line, receiving a ball past the number nine, past Harry Kane, and then kind of committing a midfielder. That's when the spaces started to open up. And we spoke about this is that's when we had players who were receiving balls wide mm -hmm. and trying to get 
services into the box. So I think that is those two things really stood out to me today uh, in the match. And I think we talk about this consistently that your best defense is a good attack. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like once that is solidified um, and you take care of the ball, you're connecting passes, which I think that's why in the first few minutes of the game, they were a little bit timid. You know, when you're in those moments, you just want to connect a, <laughs> the first couple passes and then you kind of get into the game, you kind of get settled. So for me, those two or three things kind of stood out to me today, but on top of it all, like we were talking about this throughout the match that we were like so happy to see how confident the team looked. I mean, they and were I'm buzzing. so proud that um, these young guys are just coming out here being like, F it. And they're rolling their sleeves up and they're just getting after it. And it's, I don't know, it was, it was really nice to see. Finally, I feel like. What I find is that's very interesting, which I, A, I totally agree. And we always say this, how you like defend is directly related to how you attack, right? So our two center backs have to be better on the ball. Mm -hmm. I feel that at times when they put their foot on the ball, they're pushing a little bit of the panic button where their distribution, uh, I they can go long at times. They can go long with diagonal balls mm -hmm. or, you know, really breaking lines because one pass, one good pass, mm -hmm. especially our midfield is doing so well. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I feel like they're just kind of going to the right or the left, but we have to be unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel that we aren't mm -hmm. and we're playing safe, which I understand in a game like this, you never want to be too costly, but now we have to go for it. We have to get a result to move mm -hmm. forward, to move on. What I was interested, like what made this game so interesting for me is it never opened up. Mm -hmm. Like, I never felt like the game really opened up. The lines were in extremely compact, which I would, on our side, I think was for a reason. Mm -hmm. And it really worked in our favor uh, because we were able to hunt in packs and we were able to um, have really good moments of 360 defending mm -hmm. where we were suffocating mm -hmm. uh, the English side. And you could sense their frustration, mm -hmm. which is a huge credit to our men. I was just going to say that you could tell England was a oh, bit they frustrated. Were, I think they were a bit surprised, too, at how we came out. I thought they, I and think in their minds, them. they they showed up to this game thinking they didn't even play their best 11. I know. It's going to be a walk in the park for them. I feel, I do feel like they were a bit shook. Mm -hmm. I think at how well we came out and played. And so that just goes to show you that we can keep up. Well, it shows also with their substitutions. They mm -hmm. started panicking. Right. In the midfield, they had to make changes because they weren't mm -hmm. as dominant as they usually are. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I've been really, really impressed. I was happy when Aronson came on. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a big fan of him, and I know you are too. Mm -hmm. I just feel like he came on too late. I'm still waiting for him to get his start. Mm -hmm. I want to see how he can impact the team. I just don't know if he's gonna get in to that midfield with those three. They're all they're playing so well together. They're so connected. Um, I, I I don't know if he's gonna fit in there uh, as of right now because I think they're so solid uh, in the way that they're playing and the way that they're building that relationship with each other. Um, but moving into the next match with Iran, I'm. I mean, it's it's in our the ball's in our court. Like we have the control, which. We talked about this at the end of the game, why you, why they didn't play the ball in and try to, like, score and just put it in the mixer and, and and maybe at the end try to put the ball in the back of the net. Like, I don't know why, you know, Greg Bearhalter had suggested to kind of just... It, it, it but pissed. Yeah, because I don't think we don't were going to be too stretched. Like, you know, it wasn't like everybody was in the box ready to go, but I feel like in that situation, why not? You have 10 seconds left. If that. And um, I think, like... You know, I think our countermeasures were decent. There wasn't, you know, everyone in the box waiting for the ball to be served in. I feel like we did have good cover. So I, I wish maybe in the end we would have tried. We would have gone for it. Um, but yet you can't be disappointed in that because we got a point we didn't lose. And we had seven corners. I know. I know the last That's the time... problem. That's a problem. Yeah. We need to score. The last time we spoke was that lack of connection inside the final third. Mm-hmm. I don't think we had insanely great chances, but I think at this level, you're not always going to get that, you know, Christian Polistics shot off the cross. That's a half chance. Mm -hmm. He had a tiny window. He took it. I mean, the man is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. it, it, 
he's so unpredictable. I say this all the time, yeah. and I don't even think Pickford knew that that ball yeah. was coming. <laughs> but I do you think if we're going to get those one, two, three chances mm -hmm. in a game, we have to put it away. Right. At this level, we can't expect to have all of these chances that will keep coming. Like it is very hard in mm -hmm. this tournament. Mm -hmm. And for us to be successful moving forward, if we have three shots on goal, one has to go in at least right. for us to be successful. And um, before we move on to talk about what's next, what like I'm curious to know like what your thoughts are about the the nine. I feel like Greg is now circling through yeah. different players. Mm -hmm. Um, building into the tournament, I, f I felt that Sergeant or Ferreira, um, had that position and now I'm wondering what's going on and I'm yeah. not in the mix. So I'm no. totally from an outsider's perspective, each game now, it's been a different decision. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm surprised by the decision today to have Wright come in as the nine, but also I don't know much about him. So moving forward. This is a two-part question for you. Surprised about the nine, but what do you think I'll is going to happen? Yeah, what do you think is going to happen when we play on Tuesday and it's a <clears> must-win <throat> game? Who's he going to go with? Yeah, but first I want to say that right. I haven't seen him play much, mm -hmm. but I do think he's a great target forward. And I think huge. against two huge center backs on England with Maguire and Stones, mm -hmm. like they needed to maybe keep them occupied with him. Mm -hmm. So he's able to win, you know, balls in the air. He was coming low to feet to open up space for Pulisic and way on the outside. So I feel like he was somewhat dynamic, yet he's a good target forward. And I think maybe they were trying to just go for something different. Mm -hmm. Sargent obviously is a little bit, you know, he's stocky, but he's not like as tall. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, you know, that was maybe a decision that they wanted to make, um, you know, to free up, our outside midfielders, but I'm not sure what's going on with Ferreira, that situation. It kind of upsets me because I love watching him play and I think he's so good and he's done so well in the MLS and I just want them to give him a chance. Um, and I know at this level, maybe he hasn't proven that he's going to be that consistent, but I also think it's his first few caps too. And he had a lot of pressure, but you never know what he's going to do. He's so unpredictable. He can shoot on a dime. He's so creative. He loves to dribble. He loves to create opportunities in and around the box and combination play. Like I feel, and he's a, he's a, he's a winner to me. Like he knows how to find the back of the net. And so I don't understand why they won't give him a chance. I don't know why they don't, it seems like they don't trust him. And I don't know. It kind of upsets me because I really want to see him on the I'm stage. I'm really looking. I'm like rooting for him. Um, I think he'll get his opportunity, Al. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe if we go through, um, and maybe in the third match against Iran, I mean, maybe he'll come in then instead of Sargent or instead of Morris. Um, but there's something going on there. I don't really know. Um, but I don't think Wright did poorly today. I think he did his job. He did it well, um, well enough for them to tie and get the point. So, yeah, that's going to be a question mark moving forward. We don't really know what to expect. Um, but these, you know, we do have good choices, and it depends on the opponent too, right? It depends on who you're going up against, like what they're really looking for, a target forward, or they're looking for the creativity or just a goal scorer. I don't know. Yeah, so I, I think that's a great point, and I, I love your insight on, you know, I, it's the same thing for Ferreira. Listen, he's been dynamite in MLS, right? right? That means nothing mm -hmm. on the international yeah. stage. Mm -hmm. But I'm hopeful he gets that opportunity mm -hmm. because I, I do find that in the MLS, we those men don't get the respect that they deserve. No. And he has been absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. And he's proven himself mm -hmm. in our, like, league, competitive, right. very competitive league here in the MLS. But I, I want to see how he impacts the international stage because it's two totally different beasts. Right. But I'm hopeful he gets the opportunity. But why make why 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 bring him on and put him on the roster if you're not gonna Use him. give him a chance? Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand it, you're at the World yeah. Cup. You trust certain coaches just trust certain players, mm -hmm. right? It happens all the time. We know it, mm -hmm. and not every coach is gonna love you, right? Um, and you just that's just the way it is. No matter if you're better or not. But I do feel like. Maybe this next match you can get in and um, maybe if we go up and we're already, you know, winning. I don't know. I'd love to see him. That's what all. What do you think the country takes away from such a massive result? 
Like, I'm curious of what you think now. I, just for me, it gives me goosebumps talking mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. For me, I could hear the fans mm-hmm. through the TV mm-hmm. and how loud they were and how supportive they were, how passionate and excited you know they were about the way we were performing. And I haven't been able to see all the uh, of the videos that will right. start to pour in from the viewing parties, <laughs> yeah. which I live for. So I'm just curious what type of message this sends for our men who, mm-hmm. you know, rank 16, mm-hmm. very, very young roster. Mm-hmm. A lot of our men are in very established big clubs. I still don't think we get the respect we deserve. But does this... Does the conversation change now when we're going head to head with some of the best players in the world? It's funny you say that respect, because I was just going to say that that's the word. It's respect. Now they have the respect, I think, moving forward um, in world football, because, yeah, you're right. We didn't have the respect. We didn't have, um, I guess, that that confidence even as a team. Um, to to feel like we've earned that. Mm-hmm. So now I think just proving ourselves in the world, you know, biggest stage against, you know, the fifth team in the world um, who's consistently good and who's consistently there. Um, I think that, yeah, we've just earned that. And now it's unpredictable, right? When you play the U.S., you don't know what you're going to get mm-hmm. and you can't take us lightly um, and you have to be humble. I think now teams ha- are forced to be humble now because of our performance tonight. And I'm, I'm just so excited because we are young, but you can, you can tell that, you know, we have that grit, we have that mentality and we want to be respected. And we have the sophistication mm-hmm. and the understanding to compete at the highest level. When I'm watching and, and I'm seeing the way we're connecting and the way we're taking, you know, players on, I was feeling their vibe and their confidence Mm -hmm. as they settled in on the game. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that they carry this with them on Mm -hmm. Tuesday Mm -hmm. Um, because Wales lost today 2-0 to Iran. So we know what what has to happen. Mm -hmm. We have to win. Mm -hmm. For us to move on, move on, we have to have five points. And I find if I'm one of these U.S. men's players, I'm flying into that game with confidence after I just went right. toe-to-toe with one of the right. best, if not the best team in the world. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm not fearful anymore. I'm not scared or timid. I'm going for it. Mm-hmm. And I hope that they carry that with them into this game because it's a must-win. Yeah, but this is their last chance. This is their it's only last chance. chance. You work your entire life for this moment, so why not lay it all out there and play your best and just give everything. What do you have to lose at this point? You have to win. Mm-hmm. So, like, what better moment to really put on your jersey and, like, walk out on that field mm-hmm. and be like, you know what? I'm, I've am i signed up for this, and I'm, I'm made for this. Like, this is my chance. This is my time. But I do think the difference between now and maybe before with the national team is that we do have a lot more players in, in Europe, and they're playing, you know, consistent, confident, week in and week out football, competitive Um and I think that's kind of the difference from before where you have a lot of players who are in that um, environment who, you know, are challenged every single weekend to sink or swim. And I do think that you can see that the players who are in those teams and we have players on, on really good teams, club teams. And I think that's a big difference yeah. from maybe the football before yeah. with the national team. No, you know. Um, disrespect to the MLS because I do think we have a, a handful of MLS players who are excellent. They're so good at what they do, and MLS has has been so fun to watch, mm-hmm. right? And and I think we have such good players in the MLS as well. Um, but you can tell that we have gained that confidence because now a lot of our American players, um, you know, from age seventeen or sixteen mm-hmm. even um, to twenty three, twenty four, are in that. European environment and so I think that even gives our MLS players that that extra boost too um and so when you mix the two it's our American style and I think it's really fun to watch and I think that is why today was I just felt so proud and I know you were too Mm -hmm. like just watching you're like wow like this is us I didn't feel disappointed for a minute Mm -hmm. which is so exciting Mm -hmm. I'm so excited for them because they deserve this moment Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I, I don't think a lot of people understand, but probably at most likely the age of 13, they leave their home. Right. And they know the importance of going abroad and getting the experience mm -hmm. to be the best in the world, to bring it back home. Right. To challenge our culture of football, mm -hmm. to challenge the players around them, to continue to evolve and grow. Right. I love it mm -hmm. because I get it because mm -hmm. I've been there. And it is so exciting to see their confidence and them shining at the highest stage right. because they deserve it. So we spoke about Tyler Adams yeah. being um, – you know, such an impact player today in his performance. Mm -hmm. I have to talk about Matt Turner. Yeah. I thought he was great I love today. Him. Love him. Um, not a lot of experience walking into that game. I felt like he was coming out and, and demanding respect by mm -hmm. claiming crosses. Right. I didn't feel a sense of, holy shit, what decision is he making mm -hmm. besides him trying to dribble Harry Kane? <laughs> I said, okay, queen, uh, I know you're I confident. That's another level, Let's... honey. That's okay. Yeah. We're... Settle Are down. You... Okay, settle Are down. You... Settle what? down. Wait, <laughs> did you just try to dribble three players? What the fuck is going on? I was like, don't tell it. Someone get in the <laughs> goal. Uh, but I honestly, but no, he, bless. Love what him. makes incredible goalkeepers is you've got one chance mm -hmm. to make the one save that changes the game. And he did that today. Did. I loved it. Wait, pepper it to the side? Pepper it to oh. the side. <laughs> You're Parried it. Parried it. Parried You're married it. to a goalkeeper. Don't make me look bad. His handling skills today Between were top notch. Baboot it. You said last no. episode. Boom it. No, boot it. You said baboot it. I don't even remember what I said. Have an hour. Um, yeah, yeah. I am very proud of him. I think he's doing exactly what he needs to mm -hmm. do. I mm -hmm. think he's confident. He's confident with his feet. Some of us are like, oh, who's taking us? This queen's taking us for a ride. <laughs> but I, I really feel Honestly. that Arsenal has impacted the way he yeah. sees the game. Mm -hmm. And it's great to watch that firsthand. Yeah. He's a different player. Mm -hmm. And he's been there such a short amount mm -hmm. of time that I love that he's not just whoosh game balls because he's scared he's actually controlling connecting playing out, of the back. playing out of the back clipping balls where it needs to go i feel very confident his side volley he mm -hmm. was picking out players on the counter like Polisic. Mm -hmm. i feel that he is super confident mm -hmm. he is not stressed at mm -hmm. all and this is a very new role for him right. he's not decorated in terms of success or championships or anything on the international mm -hmm. like level mm -hmm. so for him to walk in here and just be like this is my let's moment let's go let's go i'm really happy because i don't know if i necessarily felt that in the first group stage right. i was like oh my god this well yeah we talked about really okay, yeah so projecting that onto the, his nervousness no. onto but i team. i do think he's gonna mm -hmm. be that calming presence we need yeah i think the players know that he will make that one or Mm -hmm. Two big saves in a game that's going to change the outcome. But I feel this way when you're on the field, and also Are Alyssa. You, you're, tends, paid, you're paid to say that. I know. I was, I was going to say also Alyssa. <laughs> like you, when you are, you know, in goal, and you know, obviously, I'm always playing in front of you. But I, it's so comforting to have a goalkeeper who's confident, cool, and collected, and knows their shit. Like knows exactly what to say. Um, in any moment. And I feel like as a player, that gives us confidence to just get into a tackle, um, build out, connect passes, always know that you're going to be there to kind of just save the day. And you can see that the team feels that with him. Mm -hmm. No matter how nervous he might seem to us, I think that they feel super confident with him there mm -hmm. in goal, directing, talking, communicating. Um, organizing, um, and the way he sees the field has been phenomenal, especially when you mentioned his distribution. We were talking about that during the game. We were like, holy shit, like his dis distribution is on point. Mm -hmm. And that's probably an effect as well from, you know, or a result from being at Arsenal and really working on that because um, you're playing also with one of the best cold givers. Listen, I, I, and, 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 that's, and, and that's, that's the key, Allie, because in the EPL, it's not a goalkeeper and 10 players. Pep right. always says this. Right. Pep has changed the way goalkeepers are viewed mm -hmm. and seen worldwide. Right. You are the 11th field player, player mm -hmm. 
he did that today. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something he didn't do in the MLS. Right. I, I don't. I don't think he was pressured to be that good. But now that he's at Arsenal, he he can't just be a good shot stopper. Right. He can't just be a good goalkeeper. Right. The expectation is Ederson mm -hmm. from Brazil. Yeah. He is the expectation. Mm -hmm. And it has shaped the landscape of goalkeeping right. because now every coach realizes the importance and the asset the goalkeepers bring when they're good with their feet. Mm -hmm. And when you think about every major tournament, the goalkeeper will make or break your team. Mm -hmm. You're either the hero or you're the goat. Right. Right now, he has to keep shining. Mm -hmm. He has to be the wall that everyone believes in. And it will give us the security and comfort of just relaxing and playing and doing what we mm -hmm. need. Because when you're worried about what someone next to you is going to do, right. you act and perform differently. Yeah. You can't take that breath of just... Mm -hmm relaxation and I'm going to do what I'm good at. You always say this though in goalkeeping there's you can't take a second off. Yeah. You're either organizing, you're watching the ball, you're watching your players, you know, you're just setting everybody up for success mm -hmm. um and just making sure you as an individual are in the right position. I like have definitely learned that um from what you've said, so I trust him too. Um even from just an outsider like I trust him. I think he's going to make the right decisions when the time comes and yeah, he's already done really, really great. And now I think that first game's over, and now he can kind of sell oh, yeah. it a little bit. And especially after tonight, I mean, he has all the confidence going into third game. So I'm really excited to see how he does, and he's really leading the team from the back. It's great. So what changes would you make moving into this third group stage game on Tuesday? Do you think Greg will make changes? Do you think... Like, what are the expectations? I mean, clearly the expectation now moving into th this third week mm -hmm. to make or break. We have to right, win. Right. But does he change anything? No, you put out your best team, period. Everyone, strap on the KT tape. Like, the he, yeah. bandages, yeah. I don't I mean, care. Just tape up your ankles. Get out there. Mm -hmm. You're going to be doing the most. Like, you have to put your best team out there. Mm -hmm. The number nine position, I don't know. But we had success tonight. I call it success because Ty in England is a success. And I do think, right, he did, you know, nothing wrong to, you mm -hmm. know, not be awarded again. The start, surprisingly, I feel like I, I didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think you put out the same team. And like we said last time, consistency is key. At this level, at this stage, you have to be consistent because you're forming those relationships and you're building confidence in players within the team. So I do think that he puts out the same the same lineup. He made one change this game. I think he's going to so feel... I think he's going to change the nine again. I don't know. I mean, let's hope Ferrer is going to be in. But if not, he's going to keep the same squad. Mm -hmm. Why not, right? If, if I were the coach, which I'm not. Um, I love we're disagreeing. I love we're disagreeing. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I think you keep the same team. They did so well tonight. And um, I think they're going to build off of that now mm -hmm. moving forward. I disagree. <laughs> well, I who love. do you think then? I what love. forward is coming in? Well, Iran poses totally different challenges than England. Right, but so then are you going to go with Sargent? Are you going to put Morris in to just, like, run him to death? I think Sargent will to... go in. I do. I think they'll go back to him or they'll go to Ferreira. A little bit more dynamic. I'm hoping Ferreira comes in towards, you know, Same. he's going to be a sub. I but I don't think we need a massive body in there No, but... with, the, with the team we're going to play. Yeah, but I, now on set pieces, what happens? I don't know if he's really a target. Fair. But I feel Good like point. we have to. And that's what Greg said in his post-game interview is they need to be better on set pieces. And the balls, the deliveries were great. So either they were getting picked or the run, like they just weren't making the proper runs. I don't really know, but I feel like Pulisic puts in an excellent Well, service. you could sense his frustration, right? Yeah. He was pissed. So that we weren't getting on the end of yeah. any of his service. The signs maybe need to be a little bit cleaned up, a little better. I don't know. I guess we'll wait and see, right? <laughs> I cannot wait for Tuesday. I know. I'm like this is, they Make need, the, the men need to know that this country is behind them, that we believe in them, that we support them. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you, they're going to win this game. Mm -hmm. They're going to win this game. Mm -hmm. I really, really feel that all the shit we've been through for all these years, missing out on the last World Cup, 
it it builds something inside of you. Right. It builds a type of hunger mm -hmm. where they know mm -hmm. the expectation and, and and they can't pass up this opportunity mm -hmm. because they've waited their whole fucking life for this moment. Right. That is where you lean into your preparation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you find the most out about yourself is when you struggle. And they've struggled right. for far too long. Right. And I can only hope they carry this momentum and this swag. I mean, they were so swaggy yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. They didn't care who they were playing. They need that mentality moving into this game. And then when we get through this game, we move forward in the tournament. Mm -hmm. They carry that with them. Mm -hmm. But right now, the challenge is Tuesday. Mm -hmm. But they were challenged today. And when you're challenged and you're uncomfortable, you grow. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they've grown tonight as a team. They've proven that they can play and they can keep up and they can, you know, be a threat. And so I think Iran now watching this game as the opponent is going to be like, oh, shit. We should be worried. We got to we got to bring our best because this is it. And so for them, they should build that build on that confidence. Mm -hmm. They've grown. They've, I think, have, you know, evolved into a real, real team. Um, tonight and and they proved that and so I think they're gonna have all the confidence moving into that game and I know we're gonna and they've be so got proud. an entire country supporting them mm -hmm. along the way yeah for sure like we are their twelfth player <laughs> right right we are mm -hmm. a and we will continue showing up and supporting them because they've earned that respect mm -hmm. they've earned that respect through their performances how they've carried themselves so far through mm -hmm. this tournament the sacrifice and dedication they've made. To continue to play at the highest level. Right. I mean, this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been it's been fun to watch. It fun has to been see so how they enjoyable. Evolved um, into this team, and I'm I'm really excited for Tuesday. Yeah. Well, <sighs> I'm not gonna sleep for a few nights. But I know. Honestly, I feel nervous because we can't control anything. Like we can't play. That's why I feel nervous watching these games. I'm like, I can't imagine and talking to Kyle about, you know that nervousness and he was like well imagine sitting in the stands watching because <laughs> at the world cups he's sitting there and i can't imagine no. how they even feel our family members even feel watching our, watching us because you can't control anything so i feel like i'm so out of control and i'm just like i, I can't even watch i don't even know what to do yeah. and you know it's just yeah out of your hands and so i feel like you know everyone asks us well would you be nervous i'm like well no because i can control like how i'm playing and performing right I can't control my opponent, but like I can control how I'm mm -hmm. showing up. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I just feel weird. I feel a little different watching the games in this tournament. And so it's like exciting to kind of be, you know, I don't know, a fan. Well, I think we cheers to the boys. Yeah. Cheers to the boys. They played so well. I'm so proud <sighs> to of them. the men who continue to absolutely. Now let's have that performance off the surprise field. Surprise us. I've, I've... Let's have that performance off the field, right? Why Let's not? start fighting for shit yeah. off the field. I'm very proud of the and performance we'll be happy the men put in. I'm very proud of the group. And yeah. I am so excited mm -hmm. to see them mm -hmm. succeed. Right. I genuinely, I'm speaking this into existence, but I, we're going to win this game. Yeah. And then we're going to go through and it's going to be. And this is just the beginning yeah. for our country. Mm -hmm. And they're going to inspire so many young people. Mm -hmm. To continue to follow in their footsteps, be better yeah, every day. follow in their footsteps. Like I'm, I'm very, I'm very jittery and excited. This is literally, this is Christmas, Allie. I think it's the best time of year when you wait four years for the World Cup and to be able to see our guys on mm -hmm. screen performing at such a high level. Like this is literally a dream come true. And it's I'm almost so, Christmas. I'm so proud. So Did cheers you, to them. It's almost Christmas, too. Did you just kind of yeah. throw that in there? Literally is. Right. Well, we're wearing our jerseys next. All right. Cheers to Tuesday. Let's go, boys! Yeah.